and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. This is a podcast about knitting and crocheting and my journey to becoming a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen and you can find me as at newleafdesigns.nl on Instagram. I also have a website newleafdesigns.nl where you can find all of my uh, free knitting and crochet patterns and also links to my paid patterns on Ravelry and I will list all of the other things probably here on the screen. Um, it is hot, you guys. I'm sure every podcast in the world is starting with it is hot at the moment, but it is so hot. And um, I actually thought I may not be recording today because I wasn't, <laughs> up until like an hour ago, I wasn't really able to open the blinders because the sunlight was just Oh, it was just like a wall like okay anyway welcome to the podcast <laughs> as I said this is a knitting podcast and crochet and spinning I have some spinning to show you so first I want to just uh, remember you guys that the breeze blocks shawl crochet along is still going on I have extended the deadline until September 1st so that's one entire month extra and uh, yeah, just because it's a really large project and I want to make sure that, you know, it's a fair amount of time. Um, Skipies have very kindly offered to, um, to send a Skipies world of choice to um, someone from the FO thread. Be sure to enter your finished objects pictures into the FO thread on Ravelry if you have finished your Breeze Block Shawl uh, from June 1st until, you know, before September 1st um, because you will be able to win a Scapius Whirl that is the original yarn that I am using for the shawl um, so the wonderful gradient yarn cake and uh, Scapius have very kindly uh, donated one to the podcast to the crochet along so you'll be able to win one of those uh, just you know uh, one of your choice uh, so that's really exciting and yeah, let me know if you need uh, more time because you know I'm able to extend it longer, but you know, I don't want to like extend it too much Because um, I do have some ideas for upcoming uh, crochet or uh, knit alongs. Yes um, So I'm gonna start off with my spinning um, I was spinning a lot last time and that was because I had some wrist pains and with spinning it seemed to be you know the least painful or at least I didn't ex I didn't experience any pain with that uh, the pain is entirely gone now so you know that's nice uh, and I was able to spin some camel fiber I have two balls because um, I'll tell you later. So uh, this is the camel fiber I was spinning last time. As some of you may know, it is tour de, tour de fleece right now. Uh, it's a spinning spin along that's you know being run at the same time as the Tour de France. And camel fiber is really really nice to spin with. It's really short. You know the the hairs are really short, so it's easier to pull apart to to draft. So you don't have to pre-draft anything. Uh, although I might have done that, so my uh, so my yarn wouldn't be as you know as fuzzy and stuff. I think pre-drafting would help uh, to prevent any irregularities, but. Anywho, uh, so this is the one I plied with two strands, two plies, um, and I basically plied until the bobbin was full, and then I had some left over, and I chain plied this. So chain plying uh, creates a three ply yarn, so it's it's much thicker, and. Uh, wonkier as well um yeah but I, I still like it and um most of my hand spun yarn i will use in a blanket although you know i have only two squares knit up so far but yes i look forward to the prospect of a hat knit hand spun blanket a hand spun yarn is just usually the softest ever 
So yeah, can't wait to knit with that. I've also been spinning some of my new fiber that I showed you the last time. Uh, I've been spinning the really pink one. It's called Rose Garden, I think. It was by Shunkley's, or dyed by Shunkley's. It's still on the wheel now, so I might have popped in a little video in the intro. Um, yeah, but I feel like, you know, it's super nice um, wool. No, it's, yeah kind of wool but you know fibers it's super nice spinning fiber and I want to um, kind of you know do my best on that so uh, with the with the camel fiber I was just like yeah I'm just doing this for fun but with the rose uh, garden fiber I want to step up my game so actually that has prevented me from spinning on it just whenever I can so yeah, I'm gonna have to think about that. <laughs> Maybe, you know, if I just spin for fun, then I will spin more, so. Anyway. Uh, yes, I have another finished object for you. And those are my Madly in Love shorty socks. So this is my very own design. The Madly in Love shorty socks. Um, they are color work, color work socks and ankle socks uh, and I've knit them with a plant-based uh, fiber um, well it's still a sock here and this um, there is 60% wool in here 20% silk and 20% Rami and Rami is a kind of it's a plant-based fiber it's kind of nettle um, and the uh, Rami fiber is really really strong which is why it's used as a substitute for nylon um, so that makes the yarn suitable for socks this is my own hand dyed yarn uh, the, and this was you know one of the skeins I I kept from my first update and yeah it just plant-based sock yarns make for such nice summer socks because they just you know they feel dry I don't really know they they don't feel quite as warm and yeah they just have this nice feel to them kind of kind of a cottony linen-y feel um, yeah so that's really nice um, and the thing about these socks that's really exciting is because I have filmed an entire tutorial series on these socks. Um, I have filmed, you know, it's one big video and it just shows you step by step how to knit these socks from the toe cast on, uh, increasing through the color work. I'm doing a modified German short row heel. Although the normal, you know, regular German short row heel is also included in the PDF pattern. Uh, more color work for the leg. A one by one twisted cuff. And a nice bind off. But. There's a but. Okay. So, I'm wondering if, you know, I wasn't going to... Um, reveal the entire secret but I guess it's out now so yes I have filmed this entire tutorial series but it's not gonna be on YouTube I have teamed up with a wonderful website to be able to offer you a platform for exclusive tutorial videos it's um, if you know Creative Bug or Skillshare or Craftsy, it's it's kind of like that. You um, you pay a membership each month, and I will post exclusive tutorial videos for you to watch. Um, you can ask questions. You can um, request tutorial videos if you're in the highest membership uh, level. So you can request specific tutorial videos to help you with your knitting and crochet, um, to you know help your knitting and crochet skills to a higher level. So yes, because when I first started to knit and crochet, it just it came very 
natural to me to draft my own patterns and after a while of course I discovered that not everybody um, makes their own patterns. Uh, I discovered Ravelry and that, you know, <laughs> there was this whole world filled with knitting and crochet patterns and people were really grateful for them. And from that time, um, I have loved um, and still do uh, teaching people how to knit and crochet. I love that. I, I love being able to explain something, you know, good enough so that people understand it. Um, also in my day job I frequently mentor other people. I just I just love doing that. I I love seeing that, you know, that spark of, you know, oh, I get it now. And of course through tutorial videos I can't see that but um, all of the wonderful feedback that I receive from you guys is just heartwarming and I just it makes me want to give so much more to you guys but of course I can't just keep on posting tutorial videos because it's very time consuming and um, you know with just the YouTube advertisement revenue it's it's not really um, you know, <laughs> it's not really enough for me to invest the time in that. So, yes, what I have done or what I am going to do, it's not live yet, is I have a membership platform on Patreon. Yes, so you might know Patreon um, as a website where you can support the makers you love, um, maybe other podcasters or maybe there's some musicians or artists you like and most of them kind of use it as a tip jar which of course is amazing it's just you can you can use patreon for whatever you know suits you and uh, but I thought okay I want to up my game on patreon and I thought it would be a great platform to post exclusive tutorial video videos of course that is just a small part of what I will do there. Um, you know, I'm not gonna give you the full story, but uh, I will include a link below where you can read it. Um, oh, that means I will have to. <laughs> I will have to launch it before this podcast. Anyway, I will try to include a link. But it will also include uh, behind the scene, behind the scenes, behind the scenes sneak peeks. Um, for example, my natural dyeing vlogs, um, some behind the scenes designing process. Um, I always really love that. And um, at a higher tier, you get the Matley and Love Shorty Socks pattern for free. It will also be able in my Ravelry store um, after the launch. But um, my Willow Patreon so will get it for free. And uh, above that, there is another tier, uh, Elder Patrons, and they can request a specific tutorial videos from me and will also be entered into a quarterly giveaway. So anyway, I feel like I've, ta like I've told you way too much. But um, if you'd like to read more, I will include a link. Thank you in advance for your consideration and for your um, attention. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> now let's resume with the podcast. So uh, I'm just finalizing the for these shorty socks. And um, I have to say, I really enjoyed making these. Uh, it's it's just a very simple color work pattern. It's very easy to memorize. Um, I like the heel that I've done. So I've, I've modified the heel a little bit um, in a way that fits me better. So I've included both options, you know, modified versus non-modified in the pattern. Um, it was one of the very first time I done, I've done a uh, twisted rib. Um, I like the stitch definition, although I'm not really a fan of the, um, you know, it's not really stretchy anymore. So it kind of, uh, or maybe it's because it's angle socks or maybe it's a plant-based fiber, but 
uh, it's not really stretchy, but um, you know, being an ankle sock, it doesn't have to go up to your calf, so it's fine. But uh, I think for future pairs, I will just use a one by one by one normal rib. <laughs> My R's and W's really mixed up today. Anyway, so. Um, Yes, I really like the stitch definition. It just it looks really really crisp. First time dyeing with my hand dye yarn, so that was really nice. I still have some left over, and this was after winding off some minis for friends. So yeah, I think oh yeah, I haven't weighed these, uh, but I don't think they will weigh a lot. Let me just get my handy scale. Because usually I use about 30 grams per sock and these socks weigh 38 grams together so yeah um, you can make a lot of shorty socks with 100 grams of yarn all right on to another pair of socks that I've been knitting uh, I've almost completed the first one I've only got the ends to weave in and the second one just needs a heel and they are my lavender socks Ta -da! <laughs> or I, I shouldn't be saying the ta-da yet because it's not finished um, I was at the marker last time um, and that was toe up so I had just done this part last time and the other sock uh, and from uh, two weeks ago I have knit the, the rest of the leg, I've done the cuff and I've done the afterthought heel. It's a little bit a little bit rounder afterthought heel. Um, I picked up only um, 28 stitches think yes only 28 stitches in, instead of 30 and uh, I think I stopped at 12 or 10 stitches but the, the last couple of rounds I've uh, decreased on every round uh, so that's what makes it rounded it just makes it a little bit more snug because um, I usually feel like the heels on my hand knit socks are really baggy and I don't really like that so um, because it you know you have this extra um, fabric um, and if you're wearing shoes on your socks um, that extra fabric just it's just a little bit annoying so um, yeah I'm knitting these for my mom and she's already tried them on or at least this one and uh, they fit really well so I'm really pleased uh, for the other sock, uh, so last time I hadn't done the ribbing yet as I was uh, waiting to see if I had enough yarn to uh, get this one up until the same length. Uh, and I did, so now I completed the ribbing as well and I will be putting in the heel. Um, and then they're finished! Um, yes, I'm really excited to, to give these to my mom um, she has one hand knit pair by herself um, or she has she has multiple but one is knit by herself and um, two by others and now she will receive one pair by me and um, yeah it's just really nice knitting socks for people you know people you love um, yes really like that. Uh, so the yarn I'm using is um, the main yarn here is Drops Fabel. Um, don't have the colorway name but I think it was something lavender-ish. <laughs> and the uh, contrast colorway is uh, West Yorkshire Spinners in the Penny Royal uh, colorway. I had one more knitting whip to show you, but um, I'm kind of sad, but also, you know, mixed feelings. 
Uh, it's not a whip anymore. I had to frog it. And it was my Tegna, or Tegna, sorry. So, um, and after I frogged it, you know, there was, there was a little issue, little issue, and I had to frog it. And after I frogged it, I discovered that a lot of people have the same issue. So if you're knitting the Tegna, you might want to double check. So what happened? So here's my Tegna now. It's all back in two balls of yarn. Um, so when I showed you last time, not sure if it was the previous uh, episode or the one before that, uh, someone commented like, wow, I hope you're knitting the right size because that looks huge. And I was like, uh, you know, sure, it looked huge, but I was like, it's supposed to be like that, right? Uh, the, um, the bottom is kind of flared um, and, you know, lace always stretches out so it's hard to tell and it was supposed to be kind of boxy uh, so I was, the whole way, I was just like, yeah, whatever uh, I'm sure it's supposed to be this way and um, I'm always, you know doubting the designer and um, making up my own um, making up my own size um, you know calculating my own size with the pattern and this time I thought okay well I'm just not gonna do that I'm just you know gonna trust the designer um, I do have to say I do have to say um, that I am using a yarn with an entirely different gauge so I did have to calculate a little bit uh, and the gauge swatch that I made you know I I told you last time I was a good knitter and I made a gauge swatch in the round I you know it's double amount of knitting for a gauge swatch and I hate gauge swatch so so there I <laughs> I put in a lot of effort and when you know, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure that you can guess what happened. It turned out to be way too big. Um, cause I, I was playing yarn chicken, meaning, uh, I felt like I was running out of yarn and I was thinking, okay, if I separate for the sleeves now, it will be a little bit too cropped and it won't cover everything that I want. Um, but, you know, if I knit longer, then I might not have enough yarn for the sleeves. And also, you know, I like sleeves because I also want to cover up my upper arms. So anyway, I decided to put it on scrap yarn and hold it in front of me. I was standing in front of the mirror and I was like, I can fit in here twice. <laughs> Uh, and I know it was supposed to be kind of oversized and boxy, but this was just insane. So, um, and I measured my gauge again on the actual, um, whip and the gauge was just way different than the gauge I had. So... That was disheartening because, okay, now I had my actual gauge, but, you know, for the future, does that mean I cannot do a gauge watch? Or, you know, it was just, yeah. Because I started knitting the, the actual thing not long after I had made the gauge swatch so I know my gauge can change over time but like in that short amount of time I, I'm just not quite sure what happened you know it, of course it can also be that of course the the work in progress was much larger and happier so there's more um, more weight on the stitches so that maybe that's why they were a little bit stretched out um, but 
yeah, it just didn't really make sense to me. So um, anyway, I will cast on again sometime, not today, probably not tomorrow, but um, sometime, I hope, in the next two weeks. Because, <laughs> yes, I, I do really like this top. It was re really fun to knit. And I will be able to make some modifications now that I know the pattern a little bit better. Uh, remember last time that I had um, omitted some purl stitches and replaced them with knit stitches in the lace pattern. And uh, But I had left some purl stitches in and I might just replace those with knit stitches too because they look kind of wonky to me um yeah anyway so that's my tanya <laughs> uh there were there were no tears but you know still ripping out so many stitches is not fun like okay some people have had to rip out like five centimeters of ribbing uh, of, of lace because they had twisted it. Um, I was also really afraid that I would twist it um, and get a mobius effect. But, you know, I had 35 centimeters of knitting of, you know, 90 centimeters circumference. And yeah, just, uh, <laughs> It wasn't really nice, but things happen, and um, I posted on it on Instagram about it, and some people were actually relieved that I make mistakes. So you know, yeah, you guys, I, I'm a person, I'm a human being, I make mistakes. So yeah, rest assured, everybody makes mistakes. Um, yes. Okay, on to happier things, because I've made a lot of progress. On my breeze block show, uh, which is the one I'm I'm hosting the cow for, and I'm gonna show you the progress on my yarn cake because the yarn cake is now more like a yarn bun, like like a, um, a pecan bun. <laughs> anyway, so last time. I was in the blue section. I had crocheted this part all the way up to the dark blue and now I've added in the yellow and this ugh, this just looks amazing. Um, yeah, I'm able to show you where I was exactly last time because I've added uh, I've attached a cute stitch marker. It's the alpaca stitch marker. So cute. It's by Starfiber Studio. So I was there. And I have crocheted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows. Yeah, so that's much more than the four rows I had last time. But, you know, last time I had a sore wrist, so I couldn't do much. Yes, but I've, I've crocheted a lot, a lot on this. Um, and I actually think I will finish it before the deadline. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Don't pull out any stitches or it won't go any faster. There's only one blue strand left in the yellow, so it's almost completely out. And then it will just be nice lemony um, yellow and some beige. So that will be really nice. Um, yeah, I really love these colors. So again, be sure uh, if you're participating in the BreezeBlocksCal to tag your pictures with hashtag BreezeBlocksCal and also with BreezeBlocksShawl so people can still find your pictures if the cal is over. I'm using my tulip crochet hook, a 3mm hook. I really, really like tulip hooks. Um, they have a really soft grip 
and they're really pretty. Uh, even the the actual hook is kind of pink. Um, that's just really pretty. I have the whole set. Um, I I do also like the clover amour hooks. I'm just uh, you know. Sometimes I have more projects that require one hook size and I like to keep the hook in the bag because oh I have experienced a couple of times that I have you know taken a work in progress to my mom or whatever in the train and that I've not taken my crochet hook which means you cannot work on it so yeah it's like unscrewing the needles from your project and then forgetting to pack them and I was like oh. so yeah I like to have multiple sets and just put them in the project bag with the project <laughs> some of you will be pleased to know that I've done some more natural dyeing the, the past week and I have experimented some more with avocado dye with carrot top dye and with onion skins um, and these are all on my sock base, which is the same base that I used for the Madeleine Love Socks. So 60% wool, 20% silk, 20% Rami. And these are the ones um, dyed on avocado. It's a really, really pale um, peach orange. Um, so it's it's just really really pale I'm not sure if I will over dye these maybe make a variegated yarn um, not sure because it's really really light and I'm not sure if a lot of people are into that uh, usually if you're buying hand dyed you want something special um, but you know these are still beautiful so yeah I'll have to think about that and I dyed some with carrot top and the, the um, tie wrap is still on these. Um, so these are the colors I got. It's kind of a muted yellow. And I think I made the mistake of letting these dry in the sun because last time it was a really vibrant yellow. So that's a bit of a pity. But, um, and also last time I got a really uh, soft green and now it's, yeah, it's it's just yellow. Um, maybe a kind of greenish yellow, but still yellow. Um, so, you know, every time I'm amazed by the variety you can get from just one dye plant. Um, plant, you know, this was carrot top, but yeah. So, um, they are not quite mustard, but you know, very close. So really like those. Then I dyed some with onion skins. And again, these colors were faded in the sun. I shouldn't have uh, let them dry out in the sun, but uh, I still really, really like the way they came out. This was uh, the first dye bath and I was amazed. You, uh, I was just so surprised because um, I used red onion skins and when I cook them, uh, you know, it really smells of onion soup. So that's also really, um, really fun. Um, fun. It's not fun. Smells are not fun. Anyway, uh, so red onion skins and the, you know, soup was pink, you know, red. Um, and I put in some, you know, some uh, paper tissue um and took it out and it was kind of like red orangey uh and usually i th you know you would think the yarn would turn out that way but i put in the yarn and it turns green what the hell is this is it the alum probably but i was so amazed it was you know, I'm thrilled to have green because green is difficult to get. Um, it's a beautiful green. Uh, makes me think of olives. Oh, it's so beautiful. Um, 
yes, I'm really, really pleased with that. And when I took it out, there was still some dye potential in the, uh, in the dye. So I put in this skein and, you know, in some places you can still see the vibrant yellow but other places are really muted and that's because you know when i let it dry in the sun i just you know i have this this uh chair but where it was against the chair it still had the kind of original color and on the front there was a faded color so now it's kind of variegated which is really nice um and yeah it kind of reminds me of the world i'm using for my breeze block shawl uh kind of also these lemony uh yellows and uh some muted yellow so yeah really like this one uh, i won't dye this one over that's you know that's a keeper but uh i want to dye uh some more yarns with onion skins and then just you know hang them out to dry in the shade because gosh i really want you to see the shades that i got oh it was so beautiful um yeah so better look next time but these are you know i'm really happy with these as well lastly i want to talk about some acquisitions i got for a upcoming project i am planning to knit a sweater for autumn and I've ordered the yarn uh, from, from Skate Kiss. And so I still have to, you know, I'm, I'm planning to design my own sweater. So, you know, this won't happen very short term. But still, I wanted to show you because the yarn is gorgeous. Look at this. I, it's still in plastic, so I can show you all of them at once. I'm not sure if I will need all of them. They're 50 gram balls and I'll be knitting an M, uh, just a medium size sweater. Um, yeah, but this is the Escape Use Merino Soft Brush and it's a 50% superwash merino yarn, 25% micro and 25% acrylic, which, you know, helps to keep the cost down um which is great and the colors are amazing i will get one out so here it is so it's a speckled pink it's you know all kinds of pink uh and the colorway is called van dyke uh van dyke um merino soft brush is um well the merino soft series they also have a regular series uh i think about 60 colors or maybe even more um they are named after artists after painters and um so you have van gogh uh Fermier, all of the um you know all of the famous painters not not just dutch ones um and then there is, um, and it's just, you know, this, this speckle effect, what you get if you have this, this, uh, kind of hard brush and you kind of flick it and you get these paint splatters, um, and they've just continued to give, to give these, um, artist names. And so I will not only be using these. I've also ordered some mohair to go with it. <gasps> like all the cool kids are doing. <laughs> yeah, so these two together, I think will be amazing. I was uh, inspired by Amy's No Frills sweater, Amy from uh, Stranded Dye Works. Uh, I am still knitting on my um, grayish blue uh, No Frills, but um, I wanted a more worsted type sweater, um, you know, like a really big snuggly one. And the color she was using, oh, I just love them. And yeah, she uses um, darker pink, but yeah, I think this will be really, really nice. Uh, so this is Merino Soft Brush Mohair. 
I will be using is Escapia's Mohair Rhythm and the Mohair Rhythm series and also the Alpaca Rhythm uh, are named after dances and this one is called the Jitterbug uh, which I may know from a song? I don't know. Jitterbug. Yeah. Anyway, and what I really like about this mohair is that it comes with an easy start tag. That's something Scapias do with some of their yarns. So um, the inner strand of the ball is tagged so you can find it really easily. And with mohair, it's just a lifesaver to work from the inside of the ball. It is so much nicer. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to this project. They also have the easy start tag on the Merino Soft. Um, I think just most of the uh, most of the yarns. Um, yeah, so really looking forward to this. Um, I think it will be on six millimeter needles. So yeah, looking forward to that. Um, I won't be starting it in summer, I think, but maybe in a couple of weeks time. KP's also sent me this Dutch crochet book, um, which has just come out and, you know, see if I might want to make anything from that. Uh, they're called Geef Beesjes, uh, which is, um, Geef means give and Beesjes means uh, beasties, like uh, animals. Um, and they're made, um, these are um, crochet dolls and animals that you can give away as a gift and uh, all of them have a tiny pocket where you can, you know, add a little envelope or, you know, some money or whatever. Um, and oh, I've already spotted my favorite. I'm gonna see. Oh my gosh, so cute. Oh, I have to show you this one. Um, there's a little granny in here. Oh my gosh. So cute, but I'm looking for the elephant, um, a crocodile. So this one is called the um, Offswim Crocodile, which is kind of the uh, swimming certificate crocodile. Like, you know, this um, when kids go to school swimming, um, you know, and when they get their diploma or their certificate, um, you can give them this crocodile. <laughs> so cute. Okay, where is that elephant? Oh, this is so cute. Oh my gosh, I really should have looked this through because I like every one of them. <laughs> Look, it's a tooth. <laughs> it's like, you know, like a tooth fairy. Oh, so cute. Elephant. Oh. birthday bunting around his neck and a little party hat oh so cute I really really like these oh and all of these are made with Skippy Stonewash I think which is a really nice yarn for uh, Amigurumis unicorn just saying unicorn um, a dinosaur with a scar This is just the cutest thing. Oh, here, here they all are. <laughs> Look at the pirate tooth. Oh. oh my god. Yeah. I'm not sure if I will make anything from these, but I know my mom will love this because um, my mom loves making things for her uh, godchild. Um, uh, making stuff for uh, one of her cousins and uh, so cute <laughs> yes so uh, I'll be looking into this and see if I can post a review on it and that's all for today and um, I'm happy it's done because it's so hot in here and I'm gonna pour myself a nice cold drink and I hope you do the same 
and yeah happy knitting happy crocheting happy spinning and i will see you again in two weeks i probably forgot to say a whole lot of things but yeah thank you for watching that's what i want to say um yeah see you next time bye bye